Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you're all doing well. Today, I am finally taking a look at Ping Bypass. I have received way too many comments requesting this video, so today I am finally going to tell you about Ping Bypass, how it works and how you can set it up for yourself. But first, I'd like to shout out my Discord server, links are in the video's description. And I'd like to shout out the legends that are my YouTube members, they help me make higher quality videos more often. If you enjoy my content and would like to support my work, please consider joining for as little as 0.6 US dollars. Anyways, let's take a look at Ping Bypass. So before I tell you how you can set up Ping Bypass for yourself, I'd like to tell you how it all works. I assume most people watching this will be familiar with the term ping, but for anyone that isn't, ping refers to the network latency between a player's computer and the server that they are playing on. Ping is measured in milliseconds and the lower the latency the better. So most of you probably know that different servers are hosted in different locations around the world. There are obviously more players in certain parts of the world and this generally defines where servers are hosted. Most servers are hosted in the United States of America, in Europe, or in Canada. If you don't happen to live near one of these locations, you likely won't have a good connection to the server. In my case, I am connecting from South Africa, so I get around 170 ping to European servers and around 250 ping to American or Canadian servers. For general Minecraft gameplay, this is somewhat acceptable, but when it comes to PvP and Crystal PvP, the bad ping becomes a huge disadvantage. The only real solution to getting better ping is to move closer to the server, but this of course is not a very practical option. However, when it comes to Crystal PvP, most of the tasks are automated. Your client is doing all of the hard work. It is placing the crystals and blowing them up. So if we move your hacked client closer to the Minecraft server, you would have your usual ping, while the client that is doing all of the work will have low ping. This is the basic principle of ping bypass. Now that you know how Ping Bypass works, I'd like to tell you some of the benefits you get from using it. The most obvious benefit is having better ping, which is essential for Crystal PvP and combat gameplay. The second and less obvious benefit is being able to connect to a server like 2B2T and wait through the queue while also potentially getting better ping. Because the game that is connected to the server is not running on your local computer, you can disconnect your local computer from the ping bypass server, but your game will continue to run on your ping bypass server. When the queue is really high, this could be used to sit through queue overnight or while you go out without leaving your computer running the whole time. This can also be used to sit through queue while you play other games on your computer. Ping Bypass allows you to completely close Minecraft on your local computer while still being connected to a server, saving your system's resources. Before we get into the setup of Ping Bypass, I'd like to take a quick break and remind you all to like or dislike the video so that I know if you're enjoying my content. And if you found this content helpful, please consider subscribing. Okay, so now that you know what Ping Bypass is and why you would want to use it, let's take a look at how you can set it up for yourself. A fair warning, this does get somewhat technical, but if you follow the steps exactly, I'm sure you will get it to work. It is also worth noting that setting up a server for Ping Bypass to run on is not free. Today we are going to use Google's 90 day free trial, but we will still need a credit slash debit card to activate the trial. Unfortunately, prepaid cards will not work for this. Don't worry, they only charge 0.01 US dollars to confirm whether your card is valid or not, and then you will be refunded. And after the 90 day free trial, Google will not automatically charge you. At this point, you will have to decide whether paying around $30 or more a month is worth it for the server. Before we get started, I have to give a huge shout out to Havox who helped me with this tutorial. He actually has his own tutorial where he explains a little bit more in depth about each step and what you're actually doing. I have linked his video down below and I'm sure he would appreciate any love sent his way. Havox also runs a free ping bypass server that you can request to connect to. Again, this will be linked in the video's description. 
And lastly, Google is notoriously bad for changing the layout of the cloud platform. So if things look different, please let me know and I will pin a comment with updated instructions. To accompany this video tutorial, I have linked a written tutorial in the video's description. It may be slightly easier to follow, you won't have to keep pausing the video and skipping back to keep on track. So check that out with the link down below. There will also be a little bit of additional information there about how to restart your ping bypass server if you're having issues. Anyways, to start, we need to go to cloud.google.com. Click on get started for free and wait for the page to load. Now you're going to be prompted to give some basic information. Select your country and select personal project and click continue. Here it is going to ask for payment information. You'll have to add your credit or debit card here if you don't already have one linked to your account. Once you have added your information, click start my free trial. Once your card has been verified, you will be taken to the Google Cloud dashboard. Under the top products, you should see Compute Engine, or alternatively, open the navigation menu and click on Compute Engine. Once the page loads, click on Enable. This took about two minutes for me. Just wait on the page until you're automatically redirected to the Compute Engine dashboard. We now need to open a port for our ping bypass server. To do this, open the navigation menu and click on VPC Network. Once the page loads, click on Firewall, which can be found in the menu on the left-hand side of your screen. Once that loads, click on Create Firewall Rule. Now, we need to fill out some basic information. Under Name, you can put anything you like, but I recommend keeping it descriptive, like Ping Bypass Port. Under Description, you can write anything you would like. Next, make sure logs are turned off. Make sure Direction of Traffic is set to Ingress. Make sure Action on Match is set to Allow. Targets should be set to all instances in the network. For source IPv4 ranges, type 0.0.0.0/0. Set both TCP port and UDP port to a number between 1 and 65535. It is best to avoid using ports 20, 21, 22, 23, 25, 53, 443, 465, 1194, 25565, as these are likely already in use. Both TCP and UDP must be the same. I recommend writing down the port number that you choose because we'll need it later on in the setup. Now make sure all of your settings are correct and click on create. Now wait for the port to open before moving to the next step. Now we need to open a new virtual machine. To do this, open the navigation menu and once again click on Compute Engine. Once the page loads, click on Create Instance. Now you need to name your new virtual machine. I'm going to name mine Ping Bypass. Now this step is very important. You need to select a region close to the server you are playing on. If you are unsure where the server you want to play on is hosted, ask in the server's Discord or ask a server admin. The closer you get to the server's location, the better ping bypass will work. Shown on screen now is a map of the popular servers and their hosting locations. Don't worry about the zone option, it should not affect your ping. The default settings work just fine. Under Machine Family, select General Purpose. Under the Series option, select E2. Just underneath that for machine type, select the E2 medium option with 2V CPU and 4GB of memory. Now you need to scroll down to the boot disk settings and you need to click on change. When the boot disk menu opens, click on operating system and change it from Debian to Ubuntu. Now you need to change the version from Ubuntu 18.04 to Ubuntu 22.04. There will actually be a few versions of this. We need the x86-64 version, written in smaller text beneath the title. None of the other versions will work for ping bypass. Once you have the correct version, click select to close the boot disk menu. Next, scroll down to the firewall settings and make sure to allow both HTTP traffic and HTTPS traffic. Make sure all of the settings you have entered are correct and click on create. Now you may have to wait a few minutes for the virtual machine to be created. Once your virtual machine has been created, I recommend saving the tab as you will need it later on. You may also need it to restart your ping bypass server at a later date. Okay, so now that we have an open port and a running virtual machine, we have to update the virtual machine and install ping bypass on everything that ping bypass needs to run. Once your VM or virtual machine has been opened, click on SSH to connect to it. This will open a new page. This may take a few seconds to load. Once your console opens, type sudo apt update and hit enter. Once everything has updated, you need to type sudo apt install open jdk-8-jdk -dash -dash -jdk and press enter. It is going to ask if you want to continue, type the letter Y and press enter. 
Once the previous command finishes, type sudo apt install unzip and run the command. We can now finally begin installing ping bypass. To start, we can minimize the SSH in browser tab. Now that we are back on our computer, we need to download the latest versions of Earthhack, Headless Forge, Headless MC, and HMC specifics. I've linked all of these in the video's description. Once you have downloaded all of these mods, put Earthhack, Headless Forge, and HMC specifics into a folder, name the folder mods, and compress it into a zip file. It is important that you name this folder mods with no capital letters. Reopen the SSH in browser and click on the arrow pointing up. Now click on choose files and select the headless MC jar file that you previously downloaded. Now click upload files and wait for it to finish uploading. Now type ls in chat and press enter. The console should now list the exact name of the file you uploaded. If anything is different or the file doesn't end in .jar, you need to re-upload the file. Now that headlessmc has been uploaded, we need to run it. Type java-jar head and press the tab button on your keyboard to auto-complete the name. The final command should look something like java-jar headlessmc-launcher-version.jar. Now press enter. Once the command is running, type quit and press enter. Now you need to type ls in the console and press enter. There should be a new file listed called headlessmc. Now you need to type nano tilde slash headlessmc slash config.properties and press enter. This will allow us to edit the headlessmc properties. If you have run a Minecraft server before, this may be familiar to you. Once the window opens, you will need to paste the following commands. They are down in the video's description. Once you have pasted the commands, press Ctrl plus X to exit and type the letter Y to save and then press enter. You should now be back on the console window. Here you need to once again type the following command java-jar head and then press tab to autocomplete and then press enter to run the command. Now type download 1.12.2 and press enter. Once this finishes, type forge 1.12.2 and press enter. You now need to log into the account that you would like to play on. To start, type login followed by your account's email address. Now you need to type password followed by your account's password. Your password won't be shown as you type it into the console. So be sure of your keystrokes or rather paste your password in. Press enter and it should say logged in successfully. Now you can press Ctrl plus Z to end the process. If you get an error here saying fail to log you in, user has enabled double authentication, you will need to open the link account.live.com slash activity. Now sign into the same account that you want to play on. Here you will see a recent login attempt with the location of your Ping Bypass server. Click this was me and then try logging into your account again. Now type java-jar headless and press tab to autocomplete and then press enter to run the command. Type launch and then type the number that is next to the forge installation. In my case it is 1, it may be 0 for you, followed by dash id. The full command should look like this, launch 1 dash id and then run the command. This is going to take a bit of time to run and install everything. Once the messages start ending with because it's not playing anymore, you can press Ctrl plus Z to end the process. We can now upload our mods to the ping bypass server. To do this, click on the up arrow and select the mods.zip file that we created earlier in the video. This will take a bit of time to upload. Now that the mods.zip file has been uploaded, type unzip mods. To make sure it worked, type ls and press enter. You should see both mods.zip and mods listed. Now type nv tilde slash mods tilde slash dot minecraft and press enter. Once again type java dash jar head and press tab to autocomplete and then press enter to run the command. Now we need to once again run the launch one dash id command. Remember this may be launch zero dash id for you. When you see cached sphere in chat, type quit in chat and press enter to kill the process. Now you need to type nano tilde slash dot mycroft slash earthhack slash ping bypass dot properties and run the command. You will now need to paste the following commands. You now need to open your browser back to the console.cloud.google page that we left open earlier. Here you need to copy the internal IP of the virtual machine that we created. Don't close this page as we will need it again later. Now replace internal IP with the internal IP address that you just copied. On the next line, replace 
place open port with the port you chose earlier in the video. This is the number that I told you to write down. And lastly, replace any password you want with a password you can remember. Again, I recommend writing this down as you will need it to connect to your Ping Bypass server. Your final command should look something like this. Once everything has been updated, press Ctrl plus X, then type Y and then press Enter. Now that everything has been set up, I recommend restarting your virtual machine before starting Ping Bypass. To do this, go back to the tab that I told you to save earlier. And next to SSH, click on the three dots. Then click on Reset. It is going to take a few seconds to restart, but once it stops loading, click on SSH. If you did not save the tab earlier in the video, go to cloud.google.com, make sure you are logged into the right account, and click on Console. Then click on the project that you created. Once the SSH window opens, type java-jar space head and press tab to autocomplete, then press enter to run the command. Now we need to once again run the launch1-id command. Remember this may be launch0-id for you. Once this is running you can minimize the SSH window. If you close this window your ping bypass server will turn off. There is more information in my written tutorial about a command that you can use to keep the server running even when the SSH window is closed. So check that out if you're interested. Now back on your home computer you can download Earthhack and put it in your mods folder and run Forge and once your game loads click multiplayer and at the top right of your monitor click on the little book. Now we need to once again open the console.cloud.com Google web page and copy external IP. Now close the page and open Minecraft again, paste the external IP into proxy IP. For proxy port we once again need the port you chose earlier in the video, the one I told you to write down. And in the last field you need to type the secure password that you chose earlier, again I told you to write this down. Now click done and at the top right of your monitor click the ping bypass button to enable it. You can now connect to a server and you will be connected through ping bypass. Now that you have Ping Bypass set up, there are a few things I should tell you. First, if you have more than one Minecraft account and you connect to the Ping Bypass server with a different account from the one you signed into during the setup process, you will actually be playing on the account that you signed into during setup, not the account running on your local machine. Secondly, when you are in a server and you want to disconnect, pressing escape will open two options, disconnect or disconnect from Ping Bypass. Clicking the normal disconnect will disconnect both your game and your ping bypass server from the game server, while clicking disconnect from ping bypass will only disconnect your game from the ping bypass server. The ping bypass server will continue to run and stay connected to the game server you are playing on. So if you wanted to close Minecraft and play other games while sitting through 2B2T's queue, you could connect to 2B2T with ping bypass and then click disconnect from ping bypass and close your game. When you return, do not connect back to 2B2T, rather click on the little book at the top right of your screen and copy the proxy IP. Also take note of what your proxy port is set to. Now press cancel or escape to get back to the multiplayer screen. Now click on add server and under server address paste the proxy IP that you just copied. Now type a colon and then type the port from proxy port. You can now click done and you should see a new server. Here it will tell you what server you are connected to and what position in queue you are if you are connected to 2b2t.org. You can now connect to this server to get back into 2b2t's queue and depending on how much time has passed since you connected you should be in a much lower position in the queue. And lastly, a few of you are probably wondering if you can use different clients with ping bypass. The simple answer is yes, you can use any client that runs with ping bypass. However, only ping bypass will benefit from low ping as other clients are not designed to use the ping bypass server. This video was very long and quite technical, but I hope it was helpful and understandable for everyone. Huge shout out to Havox for helping me with this video, and another huge shout out to the Ping Bypass dev. I was blown away to learn that the Ping Bypass client contains over 140,000 lines of code. He also made Headless MC, HMC Specifics, and Headless Forge, which are all required for Ping Bypass to work. 
This is honestly an incredible project and it is amazing that it is free and open source for everyone to use. Anyways, thank you so much for watching to the end of my video, I really appreciate your time. Don't forget to subscribe for the giveaway and seeing as you are still here, I assume you enjoyed the video so please consider leaving a like. I've also recently revamped the Kylab Gaming memberships area on my channel so be sure to check out the benefits with the join button. Quick shout out to my members for all of their support, they help me make higher quality content more often. Anyways, it has been your boy Kylab, peace in the Middle East.